the next speaker is an organizer of this conference, so she already introduced herself. Vinesta uh, Bianconi is a professor of applied mathematics here in London at Queen University, and she's also a Turing Fellow here at the Alan Turing Institute. Thank you so much for the introduction. It's a real pleasure to be here among so many faces that I know and collaborator, and also uh, it's good to meet the um, community of spectral graph theory. I really enjoyed the previous talk. Um, so today I want to speak about series of work that, that we have been doing about uh, in the interplaying between topology and higher order network and dynamics. Let me start with a quote of a famous mathematician which says, the world is continuous, but the mind is discrete. And well, I think the first sentence is quite questionable. It depends on your belief. Uh, but of course, this is a beautiful uh, introduction in order to say that also if you don't believe that the world is discrete, there is still space to do uh, research in network and hypergraph and simplicial complex. And maybe we can even understand the brain in the middle. <laughs> So network have been a very important framework to characterize complex system in a variety of settings. And you can describe a large variety of system in this way. So for instance, let's take the, the, the node in the middle and its collaboration network. Um, and, and you see all the authors that have uh, co, co collaborated with them. But actually, this is only a partial information because you don't know which are the teams, which are the authors that uh, collaborated in, in a paper. So you need higher order network and hypergraph and simplicial complex uh, to do that. And, uh, and um, an example of simplicial of, of hypergraph is certainly a collaboration network where you can have authors like uh, that, uh, more than two authors that collaborate on, on the same paper. Uh, but uh, higher order network are raising a lot of attention also, for instance, in brain research, when you can have three regions of the brain that are correlated pairwise, or three regions of the brain that are activated at the same time. And one is represented by an unfilled triangle and the other by a filled triangle. You can say an upper edge or also you can say a simplex. And actually, um, topological data analysis with uh, simplicial complex allow you also to study um, other systems like biomolecule. And I think Kayleen uh, will speak in detail about this. Um, and there are also another different type of higher order networks, which are triadic interaction, which are very interesting, is when one node or a series of nodes can regulate uh, the interaction between other two nodes. And this happens, for instance, in the brain when you can have um, two neurons interacting via synaptic connection and then a glia that is modulating the synaptic connection. And um, we have uh, recently quite a um, few words on the topics and Anling will speak about uh, uh, the model in, in more detail on Friday. So we have three types of higher order interaction, hypergraph, simplicial complex, and network with triadic interaction. And simplicial complex can be seen as a subset of hypergraph where there is, uh, that are closed under the inclusion of the simplices of each, uh, the, the phases of each simplex. And an important question, and a question that um, for many computer scientists is very important, is if you have data, what is the best representation? Do we prefer hypergraph or do we prefer simplicial complexes? And for computer scientists, typically, traditionally, they always uh, chair about the hypergraph and we are seeing a lot of progress in mathematics of hypergraph but historically mathematicians were leaning towards simplicial complexes and i actually still still lean in this direction so i want to tell you uh, a way to represent an hypergraph like a collaboration network just in terms of a simplicial complex and so assume that you have a collaboration network with authors that have papers together. But for instance, in this case, or in this case, these three authors have one three author paper together. And, and these two authors have 
three, two, paper, two author paper together, but it's not close, right? So you would not represent these as a simplicial complex. But actually, if you adopt weighted simplicial complex, there is a way to encode for the weight of the simplices by closing every phase of the simplex such that you don't lose information. Because you can take the facet and associate a weight that is the, the bare weight, but then any faces, for instance, this edge, you associate a weight that is its own bare weight plus one, the weight of the, um, of the simplices of a one dimension up that, uh, um, that is incident to that edge. And this is a linear transformation and is invertible. So actually you encode all the information of the hypergraph in a weighted simplicial complex. So this is the importance of weight in this context. So a weighted simplicial complex can really uh, encode hypergraph without loss of information. And so this motivates me to move to simplicial graph, <laughs> simplicial complex only, which, um, and, and also network, topo net network topology and geometry. So simplicial complex are formed by node, edge, triangle, and it's a, there are beautiful sets to do uh, topological data analysis and study their invariant and to characterize the structure with TDA, which is certainly one of the most um, important um, um, development uh, in, 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 in between topology and machine learning uh, recently. But actually topology is not only useful to study structure, it's also stu stu useful to study dynamics. And in this perspective it emerged that it's very important to change the paradigm. So in network science people were mostly focused on having dynamical variable only associated to the node of a graph, right? So epidemic spreading and so on. But actually, dynamical variable can sit on the node, on the edge, on the triangle, on every simplex of your simplicial complex, leading to this topological spinner that are the direct sum of a zero cochain, one cochain, two cochain, and so on. And for topological signals, there is here Sergio and Michael it, 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 doing signal processing of this topological signal is very important because there are a lot of examples of topological signals uh, present in the literature, including uh, synaptic signals, edge signals on the brain, but also speed of wind of given location and current at given location in the ocean. So it's also a vector field can actually be represented as co-chain. So this changed the perspective uh, of the important interplay between structure and dynamics of network. And historically, I mean, in the last 20 years, people have mostly focused on the statistical and combinatorial property, but actually it is emerging that also topology and, and, and geometry are very important element to characterize the interplay between structure and dynamics. So there is this field at uh, the interplay between this topological spinner, description of the dynamics, network topology and geometry that can really be important to understand uh, brain research, but also fundamental physics and AI algorithm. And hopefully this can be interpreted in terms of information theory. So I come from this uh, direction, topology, but I will also discuss the result in geometry. So this is a book that I wrote some years ago, um, probably needs updated uh, uh, in the, for, for the rest. So in order to study dynamics on higher order networks, it's also important to have good models. And actually over the year, we developed both um, non-equilibrium model and equilibrium model, maximum entropy equilibrium model to study. Uh, and, and this can be, uh, good test bands to study dynamical process on top of that. So topology, as I mentioned, is the state of uh, shape, uh, shape and their invariance. So the Betty number um, are important. So the Betty zero is the connected component. Betty one is the one cycle. Betty two is the two dimensional uh, holes. And, you know, we, we want to use topology to study dynamics, so we consider this topological spin. So if you have node edge and triangle is the direct sum of a zero cochain, a one cochain, a two cochain. 
And on top of that, we can do a serial calculus. So we can do, can define the gradient by uh, as a map from zero cochain to one cochain and attributing the gradient to the edges, or we can do the divergence. So uh, doing flux in minus flux out and attributing to the node, or we can do the curl doing the circulation of the current along a, a triangle and put it on a triangle. And these are all encoding boundary matrices. Um, and these are rectangular matrices, but it's very easy to, to work with them. And they describe, describe the divis, discrete diversions, discrete gradient, and discrete curl. And they have beautiful property. And one thing that one can do is to do uh, to, to contract B1 with B1 transpose and doing uh, the Hodge-Laplacian, and they have a important uh, um, property that the dimension of the kernel is the n-betty number. And also the eigenvector are very relevant. We know that the eigenvector of the graph Laplacian is, uh, the harmonic eigenvector of the graph Laplacian is constant on the connected component. And the eigenvector of the one Laplacian is localized on the holes instead. Um, and uh, of course, if you have a signal on the edge, it obeys Hodge decompensation. So we started doing this work on topology and dynamics with, um, with Anna a few years ago. And we started to work on uh, Kuramoto model. So Kuramoto model, you have um, a variable uh, associated to the node. And the, the, vari the variable are oscillator. They oscillate at constant frequency, and they can couple together. Um, uh, if, if you raise the coupling constant, you have at the beginning nothing happens. Everybody is um, oscillating independently. When you raise the coupling constant, you start to have this collective phenomena. And uh, so we, we work with Anna on uh, what happens if you have a function on the edges. And, um, and, and actually, you, you realize that you can express the standard Kuramoto model in terms of the boundary operator. And from this is emerged that you can do straightforward, write the higher order Kuramoto model for, for, for the variable associated to the edge. This is a gradient flow of an Hamiltonian. And the Hamiltonian for the X, Y, uh, for the Kuramoto model is related to the X, Y model. And for the higher order topological Kuramoto, it has this shape. And this is an Hamiltonian that has many minima, as many minima as the holes in the system. And the synchronized state is the synchronized state um, is, is localized on these holes. And, 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 and because these harmonic eigenvector are free to move at given frequency. So what happens is that you might have a dynamics that uh, is, is synchronized on the holes, but you might have also two holes, so some degeneracy in the state. And um, because there are many minimal in this state, in this system, so, and, and if there is only one all field, you can distinguish between what happens here and what happens here with an order parameter. If, and the other again mode, you can project up or you can project down a day, and they, and they, uh, you can see that they freeze. So more is Anna talk, uh, will be said by Anna talk uh, in uh, on Thursday, I think, yeah. So, in a, in a subsequent paper, we have also studied um, theoretically, we have predicted the transition, the phase transition, and we see that this is a discontinuous phase transition on a random graph, and we have done this using the annealed approximation. So, what happens uh, for global synchronization? So, when, if, can, can, it, can there exist a configuration in which all the edges do the same? Uh, and this is work uh, with Theo and um, a series, uh, also Runia here in the follow-up paper and series of other researchers. So um, in a global synchronization setup, you have a, a one cochain, for instance, defined on each simplex. 
which obey a chaotic dynamic maybe. And then um, the, the co-chain, uh, the, 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 the variable, as the topological signals associated to different simplices are connected with the Hodge Laplacian. So uh, there are some constraint, topological constraints. You need f to be an odd function, for instance, to have something um, um, uh, uh, that, is, um, that is, reflects the, the invariance of the co-chain. And the synchronized state is a synchronized state which is uniform modulo the sign of, of the co-chain because the sign depends on the orientation of the edge. And so in order to have an harmonic eigenvec uh, a, a, a global state, you need to have an harmonic eigenvector that is constant over um, uh, all the simplices, all the edges, or all the square, all the triangle. And this puts some constraint. While on a graph, you are only, always guaranteed to have you know, a constant harmonic eigenvector in a, in a simplicial complex or in a self-complex, this is not usually the case. So it's not only a constraint on the dynamics, but also on the topology. And it happens that you need the, very special configurations, such as a torus or um, a sphere, that uh, obey this property. In particular, the square tessellation of, of, of the torus allows synchronization, global synchronization of, um, of um, like this, allow global synchronization of edge or square signal. Until now, we have only spoke about synchronization of topological signal of a given dimension, but it's very important to understand how the dynamics of topological signal of different dimensions talk to each other. And for this, we need the, the Dirac operator that is inspired, of course, by the Dirac equation, which is a linear um, wave equation, was square is related to the Laplacian is the Klein-Gordon equation. And in order to do that on a simplicial complex with node, edge, and triangle, you, um, you define the Dirac operator in this way, and these act on node, links, and triangle signal, and allow cross-talk of the different topological signals of the different dimension. And the square, if you do the square of this operator is indeed the Gauss-Bonnet Laplacian. And, and this is very interesting operator from many different perspectives, from theoretical physics and complexity as well. So for theoretical physics, you might go back to the network and try to see whether you can implement something close to the Dirac equation. And the answer is yes, you take an Hamiltonian that is the Dirac operator plus MB, where B is this matrix. You can try to find the eigenstate of this Hamiltonian in this way, and you find that the eigenstate or energy state are positive or negative. And, uh, but actually it happens that, and, and, and lambda is um, the eigenvalue of the Dirac operator. And actually it happens that this symmetry is there only for eigenstate that are not associated to eigenvector that are not harmonic. If the energy has an absolute value, value m, or um, this, this correspond to harmonic eigenstates, so they are only, the, the, the general is the Betty number beta zero or the Betty number beta one. And so the spectrum, what happens is this one. So if the mass is zero, you have this degeneracy of the harmonic eigenvector, but if the mass is different from zero, you have a degeneracy for the edge signal that is bigger, that depends on the cycle. You can study the Dirac operator and apply also approach of the nambu yonalazino model, which is a theoretical model to express the emergence of a mass. And I cut the story short, but in this framework, quantum mechanical framework, you define some spectral invariant, which are M0 and M1, which depends on the Betty numbers and the spectrum of the Dirac um, operator. And this definition of the mass and, and G is a parameter. So this definition of the mass clearly depends on the structure of the network that you have. Also, if you, are, you have two, three 
that the betting number are the same, their pro mass profile is different. But you can do this also on random graph. And in random graph, if you change the average degree, you change the betting number. So you see the different profile. And you can see also on weighted network. Here I took a collaboration network of the uh, Pierre Auger experiment with weights and look at the mass in presence of the weights and without presence of the weight and you see the different profiles. So really the, this mass is a spectral invariant that depends on the topology through the Betty number but also to the geometry. Um, speaking about geometry, uh, if you have uh, like a, a simplicial complex of node edge and triangle, you can construct this metric matrix. And now and, uh, you assume that uh, you are in Euclidean, kind of Euclidean setting, so this is positively defined. And then you can construct two different observable, the, the determinant, the volume, or the von Neumann entropy. Okay, typically the von Neumann entropy is used when the matrix is trace one as well. Here we allow this uh, to be more general and, and, and we allow to define the, the entropy in this way. And, 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 there is, and there is a general problem to study how the metric change together with the topological signal. And this problem comes, for instance, from um, okay, theoretical physics, of course, and, and uh, general relativity, but also from image processing. If you have an image uh, and you want, and it is noisy, and you want to the noise, you would do a, a low pass filter, right? You would remove the high frequency. So you do the fusion. But then, if there is a big contrast between the color, you don't want to do the fusion because you will lower the quality of the image. So you need a metric. And how to choose a metric is an important problem in machine learning. So here we want to have a dynamics that in which the metric evolved together with the topological spin or the, the color of your image or the field theory that you want to construct. And so we construct an action that as a, a single author paper, I construct an action which is the, um, the, the logarithm of the volume and the quantum relative entropy between the real metric, the one that you want to reconstruct, and the metric induced by the matter field. And the metric induced by the matter field, you can be inspired by the Gauss first fundamental form and choose, write it this in term of the, instead of using the gradient, you use the Dirac operator acting on your topological spin. And it's quite interesting because if you take this expression, you really get diffusion. For, for the, minimize the action, you get diffusion, and you get an equation as well for the metric. So of course, this is written for theoretical physics, but one could imagine, and I plan to generalize to, to machine learning as well. So um, data cooperator is also very important in complexity. We uh, use it to study signal on node and edges. So we first did synchronization model in which node and edges are interlocked, interdependent. This is a nice space diagram, including this continuous phase transition, continuous phase transition. And the dynamics, this is on a fully connected graph as well, where we have a good theoretical understanding. But actually, on a general graph, the dynamics can get really weird because there are many cycles here, right? So where is the dynamic sitting is somewhere in a linear combination of the cycle. And actually, an important problem, I think, if one wants to connect to brain research, is how you control, you know, how, how can you control and have the dynamics only sitting on one cycle or moving from one cycle to the other? We also work with the Dirac cooperator, and Theo will speak about this uh, more, but just let mention to me briefly this work in a framework of Turing, uh, Turing pattern, where you can have two no node signal and one edge signal. So in this construction, you can have a Dirac cooperator, but now you have two node signal and one edge signal. So when you project, it's not anymore 
the same shape of the topological spinner. So you need to couple with an algebra such that you get something that you go from two node signal um, uh, to uh, uh, two node signal and one edge signal to two node signal and one edge signal. Okay, so you have you have something like this. So when you do you project um, the node into the edge, you have two edge signal here, and the edge signal into the node, you have one edge signal here. So this is no good because it's not a map from topological spinner to topological spinner. But then if you couple with this matrix, it will become. Uh, so you, you can couple with an algebra and the algebra will, will do the work for you. And the, um, I don't know if Tao will speak about more about this, but the diffusion induced by the Laplacian is much smoother and the diffusion, uh, the, the pattern in, in used by the Dirac operator are quite, quite funky and probably reflect the chirality of the Dirac operator. So I want to also to finish mentioning uh, work with um, Michael, Michael Schaub that we have done uh, in this paper. So in, in signal processing, and we will hear this more, you can have a signal on node edges and triangle as well. And you might only, only access to, uh, mm, uh, you, you might only have access of a noisy signal. And then the question is, can you reconstruct the signal? And then you want to, uh, you have the true signal plus noise, and this is the noisy signal, and you want to reconstruct it in such a way that you are close to the measured signal, but you have a regularization term. And this regularization term, we want to involve both node and edge signal, and if m is equal to zero, we have the edge Laplacian. If m is different from zero, we have coupling between different signals. But we choose the kernel in a smart way because the Dirac is not positively defined. And instead, when you did Dirac minus mi, this is positively defined. So instead of having a low pass filter that filters the low mode, we, we shift the, the parabola and we can filter a uh, eigenvalue um, of uh, around this minima that we call M, and actually we can learn the choice of M. And in this way, uh, we uh, study the drifter um, data, that is the data of uh, Michael, and we had a pretty good uh, improvement with respect of the Laplacian kernel, but actually we are working on even better algorithm to improve much further the performance of the system. So here I reach my conclusion. So topological spinner are really changing our understanding of dynamics um, in higher order network and simplicial complexes. And they can undergo collective phenomena, including uh, topological Kuramoto model and global topological synchronization. And they outperform Audio Laplacian in coupling topological signals of different dimension. And they lead both of ad ad advance and progress in uh, aspects that are more theoretical, related to the regular physics, like the mass of a network. But it's also very important for, for complexity, for data analysis, for machine learning. And um, they can be used for Dirac synchronization, Dirac pattern, and Dirac signal processing. So this is um, a link to some uh, code that have been finalized by a big team of people, including particularly uh, Lorenzo that is not here, and Anna and uh, Anlin. And uh, so thank you so much for your attention. Yeah, yeah. So here, I actually, we did uh, two on the nodes. So this is a node enlarged, two on the nodes and one on the edge. But you can do the opposite, two on the edge and one on the node, and doesn't change. So when, when, if, if you have a, a, 
um, a signal on the node, you do B transpose and, uh, and it goes into the edge, right? But you have two signal on the edge, so you, when you, it, it becomes two signal. Um, uh, uh, um, yeah, maybe there is some, uh, maybe this is uh, one signal on the node that becomes two signal on the edge, yes, and two signal on the, um, uh, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, I, I will I will check you with, with this um, bit confused now. Uh, um, Um, yeah, okay. I, I will get back to you now. Um, and so in any case, the, the paper is, is, is here, yeah. Yeah, the activity is right here. Uh, so okay. It's like uh, what is to the address and then you have two of so you have the two transport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I know this is only simply short complexes. Okay, that's what I understood, right? Yeah. I'm just wondering. So, um, no, that's just to say that you can do it, but I didn't know if you were incorporating the weights or anything. No, well, here we don't use a lot of data. The data that we use are um, typically, for instance, click complex of, uh, of a network. For instance, I think in the paper with Anna, we, I, I think here I didn't use any real, the, the data with the boys, maybe this is the only real data that we use here, is uh, constructed from fluxes. Um, and then, um, uh, yes, so, the the real signal is only edges, right? So we because it's very difficult to find a data set which includes both node, edge, and triangle signal. So also our our true signal is actually generated from the edge signal doing a diversion or a um, or a curl. Uh, yeah. So. That would Think about, for example, Jorgen talked about these hypergraphs uh, earlier, right? Can you use some of the the frameworks and methods you've developed for these real examples, and you get something more? Um, yeah, I mean, I think this is the power of weighted uh, um, um, homology. And, and, and part of it is also the work that we have done with, uh, with Kaleen, right? So we have used weighted Dirac operator to study biomolecule. I don't know if he will mention this in his talk. But, but yes, probably that data originally is not an hypergraph to start with. So, okay, so there's a lot to do, yeah. Other questions? Yes, maybe I have some remarking that I of course, you can define a Dirac operator as T plus T star, which you can change the bit. But then, in order to get the spectrum, you also need to let it operate on spinner so that it operates on so that, that it gives um, space to itself. So, the question is in which generality you can define spinners, yeah. On the hypergraphs, yeah, I, th I think that the classical uh, or continuous limit of this Dirac equation is the Dirac color, um, which of course is defined on geometrical spinner, which are zero sh direct sum of zero uh, form and one form. So uh, I, I think this is in line with Dirac color. I'm, I'm not particularly interested in the continuum limit until now, maybe I will start, but um, I think um, these are also connected with what are called in the discrete, um, the Suskin, um, um, kogut suskin staggered fermions. So uh, in lattice gauge theory, these are very popular 
and is also emerging uh, also very recently contemporarily of what I was thinking that also this staggered fermion in a lattice can have a bosonic version. So you actually have this topological spinner that doesn't need the spin in some sense. It's just, uh, it's just yeah. it can be bosonic as well. So, yeah, and... Uh, yeah, yeah, they, they, I mean, it was not perceived as a necessity to have this uh, zero form and one form also for boson, but people now are starting to think about that. Other questions? No? Okay, then we can take the, we can take the next again and have a question.